Hi everyone. Welcome back to Shakespeare's Sister by Virginia Woolf. In the last class we discussed the 13th paragraph. Virginia Woolf was saying that insults on woman's creativity repeats itself whether it is 16th century or 20th century. Just like history repeats itself. That was where we stopped in the last class and now we will continue from 14th para. See, even in 19th century, a woman was not encouraged to be an artist. Instead, she was ignored beaten and lectured, advised. She was urged, forced to fulfill others' desires. It was strain to her mind. It was stress to her mind. This treatment lowered her energy, her vitality. Virginia Woolf observes in masculine behavior, we can see a tendency to block women from various fields like arts and politics, even when she is not a challenge to him. So these are the things very common in today's life as well. Men trying to block women from various fields, saying that they are weak. Taking the example of Lady Besboro, Wolf says that Lady Besboro was very passionate about politics. Even she once wrote like this, I perfectly agree with you that no woman has any business to meddle Meddle means interfere with that or any other serious business. She meant that women had no role in it. It is not women's role to interfere in serious business. The full quotation is given here. You can read. Wolf observes that the history of man's opposition to women's freedom is as interesting as the history of freedom itself. By this, she also means that the history of man's opposition to women's freedom is as old as the history of freedom itself. It started from the very beginning. So that was the contents of paragraph 14 and we are moving on to para 15. So there were times when opinions like that of Lady Besborough moved, affected people, especially women. There were many who cried at such insults. But Virginia Woolf says that educated women, creative women, should ignore such comments. Unfortunately, it is found that it is the genius, creative people among men and women both are affected by such negative comments. For example, remember the pessimistic lines written on Keats, John Keats' tombstone. Tennyson was another the nature of artists is like that. They are affected by opinions about them. They may turn negative in attitude. History of literature is full of stories of such people who minded the opinion of people unnecessarily. See, this is a very quotable sentence written by Wolf. Literature is strewn with the wreckage of men who have minded beyond reason the opinions of others. 
you can see here the tombstone of John Keats. The line, here lies one whose name was writ in water, was written by Keats himself. The phrase, right in water, means gone unnoticed, useless, etc. This shows the pessimism of a creative artist like Keats, who was very much affected by insignificant things, by opinion of others. Para 16 The state of mind of artists which is affected by others' opinion brings back a topic we have discussed earlier. That is, which is that state of mind that is best suitable for creative work? Wolf is of the opinion that in order to make a great effort, the mind of the artist should be incandescent. Incandescent means something that emits light. By this, Wolf means that an incandescent mind will bring creativity out of the artist's mind. Nothing will remain unexpressed. It is like emitting light. When Wolf reads Antony and Cleopatra, she feels that Shakespeare's mind was incandescent. There is no obstacle to his her creativity. Nothing remains unconsumed in his mind. See, incandescent mind, a symbol of creative mind, according to Virginia Woolf. And the last para, paragraph 17. Compared with the writers like John Donne, Ben Johnson, or Milton, we know very little about Shakespeare's personal life. His emotions like anger, hatred, etc. are hidden from us. Wolf assumes that all such emotions of Shakespeare are consumed in his creative process. Poetry flows out of his mind without any obstruction. Wolf says that if ever an artist expressed his mind completely, it was Shakespeare. So that is how the discussion is concluded. And some concluding remarks about it. With this, we have come to an end of Shakespeare's sister by Virginia Woolf. The paragraph summaries given in this video series can be used to comprehend the chapter. When you study, focus more attention on Para 7, which tells about the story of Judith Shakespeare. Why, in Woolf's view, did Elizabethan women not write poetry is another important question that can be expected from this chapter. The ideal state of mind of a creative writer discussed in para 16 and 17 are also important. So, thank you.